So today we're going to learn about a relatively new feature in Photoshop called Artboards, and we'll also take a closer look at how to create and manipulate type in a Photoshop document. And we'll begin by creating a new Photoshop document. So we're going to go up to File, New, or we can click on the Create New button. And we're going to begin by selecting from the Web Collection of Presets. And the reason why we're going to use web, because it's one of the presets that automatically has artboards as part of your new file. So we're going to click on web, and we're not going to worry about any of these preset sizes. We're going to create our own. We're going to use the recommended Instagram size of 1080, and make sure that your unit of measure is set to pixels. And the height is going to also be 1080 to create a square. Our resolution should be 72 pixels per inch. Always make sure you check. And color mode RGB. We're going to name this. I'm going to name it with my last name, my first initial, and I'm going to call it just Artboards. And then I'm going to click Create. Now before we get started, let's go to our window menu workspace and make sure that essentials has a check mark next to it and if you don't have essentials checked off then you're going to select essentials and even if essentials does have a check mark next to it we're going to select reset essentials to make sure that all the windows go to their default location so it's easier to follow along and usually what happens is we get a lot of our screen space taken up by stuff we don't need to look at right now so i'm just going to Go to the top of this window and click the little arrows, collapse to icons, just to free up a little more space and create a little less visual clutter. Now that we have our new document started, it looks pretty much like Photoshop usually looks. We're dealing with a square canvas or design area, but most everything else looks the same, except for notice that there's a little piece of text on top of your new document and it says it's Artboard 1, and over here in our Layers palette, which I'm now going to click on the tab and drag out, and expand out, you'll notice that it says Artboard 1 here as well. And this new layer that's automatically created with this new document is connected to Artboard 1. And if I collapse Artboard 1, you'll see that that layer isn't listed anymore because it's part of the Artboard 1 group. Now we use layer groups in the Star Wars tutorial and it's very much the same thing. This is basically kind of like a folder and you can add as many layers into this particular artboard collection as you want. And other than that, we're just working with Photoshop the way you already know how to. And of course, you can also name your artboards by double clicking on the name itself, and I'm going to call this CMYK. I'm also going to twirl open Artboard CMYK so I can see my layers as they're created. We're going to add some type into our document, so we go over to our toolbar, and T is for type, so we're going to click on it, and we want to make sure that we're using the horizontal type tool, and there's two ways you can add type into your document. One is just to click and that default lorem ipsum type shows up, but we're not going to do that anymore. And I'm going to show you why. Right now, if I just have my type inserted into my document like this and I add more words and there are many of them, you can see that I've just created this line of type and it just can go right off the document edge. And we don't want that. We want to start using our type very deliberately and allocating different areas of our design to contain that type. So this technique of adding type to your document is fine if it's just a single word or just a couple of words. I'm going to get rid of this type layer that I have by clicking on it and dragging it to the tiny trash can at the bottom of the layer palette. A better way to start using and working with type in Photoshop is to, again, we're just going to select the type tool, but instead of just clicking, we're going to click and drag. And you can see that little selection area that's showing up that's giving us an idea of how large 
a space we're creating for our type to exist in our document. And again, it gets filled with that default text, but because now I have a text container, you'll notice that the type, there are many words here, but they don't go off the edge of the document like they did in the first example. They're contained by this text container that we've created. And that text container, whenever we have the type layer active, and the easiest way to select or activate type is to double click on it here in your layer palette. And notice that it becomes all highlighted. And we can change the shape of that type container at any time by clicking and dragging on the little handles like that. So the first thing we're going to create is we're going to create a big title for this. We're going to call it a slide. So my type is highlighted right now and I'm going to press caps lock and type C M Y K. And then I'm going to start to make some decisions about how I want this design to look. So I'm starting off C M Y K and then I want to choose a font to use. Now you don't have to go to the font for this. We can keep things very simple. And right now it's St. Avenir, but I might want to check to see what other fonts are available that I might like better. And I could click and drag and make selections this way. A more interesting way to do this, making sure that my type is selected, is to click once in that field that says what typeface is currently being used. And then I can use my down arrow key on my keyboard and it will start scrolling through the list of oh, all those many fonts that I have on my computer. So I can easily preview my type and then I can stop when I see something I like. And actually I was pretty happy with Avenir, so I'm going to go back to Avenir, but I'm not going to then press my up arrow key to go back up the list that I just toggled down through. I know it starts with an A and a V, so I'm going to type A, V into this field and now I can make a choice from here. So I'm going to select Avenir Black for mine. And the next thing I want to do is I want to make it a lot bigger. And of course, as long as my type is selected, I can go here and I can make a choice from this menu. But again, a much easier way is to click once in the field where it shows the current size of the type that's selected. And I can use my up arrow key to create the size. Now if I just press the up arrow key, it's getting bigger one point at a time. And if I know I want it a lot bigger than that, I can hold my shift key and then it jumps up 10 points at a time. So I'm going to make it big, big, big. And once I'm happy with the size, I might take a moment to just tidy up my document area by making this container smaller. Now one thing I should warn you about is that when you're changing the size of your container or when you've just created a container, you might have something like this happen. Now we saw the type there and now it's disappeared. And that's because this container is too small to show the type. So I just need to increase the size of the container and then it all comes back. I'm going to select my move tool and I'm going to position this just going to keep this a very, very simple design. I'm just going to position in the center. The next thing I want to do is I want to change the color of my type. Now, every once in a while, you might be using the type tool and you're typing and nothing's showing up. It could be because of the color of the type. So again, I'm going to use that convenient trick of double clicking on the T connected with that piece of type in my layer palette. So it's highlighted and then I'm going to change the color and I change the color. Well, there's a couple of different places I could change the color, but today we're going to look at the little top menu area. And I click on that little color chip. That opens up my color picker, and then I can go ahead and change my type to anything I want. I'm going to select just black and click OK. Then I'm going to go to File, Save As, I'm going to save this to my computer and I'm going to save it into the folder connected with this tutorial. So I'm going to click on my desktop. I'm going to find the artboards and text in Photoshop folder. 
double click to open that. I'm going to double check that I've given my file a good name and then click Save. Now we're going to add some more text to our document. So I'm going to start off by going to Photoshop, hiding Photoshop, and then opening up that Artboards and Text in Photoshop folder that you should all have on your desktop by double clicking to open it. And in that folder, you should find that new Photoshop document you just created and saved. And there's also something called Text for Artboards in Photoshop Tutorial. I'm just going to double click on it. This is just a simple text document so you don't have to spend all of this tutorial typing. So I'm going to double click to open it. It opens up in a little program called Text Edit. And I'm just going to click and drag so all that text is highlighted. And then I'm going to go to Edit and copy it. Now I'm going to go back to my Photoshop document. I'm going to select my Type tool. And I'm going to create a new and separate text container for this text that we just copied. Now I want to make sure that if my Type tool is active, that I don't accidentally click on an existing container of text. And if that happens, just select your Move tool and try again. So I have my Type tool selected. I'm going to make sure I don't click on any existing text elements already in my document. And I can always reposition this later. So even if you have to create it somewhere far away from where you eventually want it to be, it's easy to move it later. So I'm going to click and drag to create a new container. And I'm not going to worry too much about the size right now because I know that I can always change the size later. You'll notice that it's getting filled up with that default text again, and it's absolutely huge. And the reason why that is is because the last time I used the Type tool, I created this text, which is 214 points, and it's Avenir. So before I even copy and paste, I'm just going to make this smaller. We're going to try 18 point. I've got that copied text on my clipboard, so I'm just going to Command V or Edit paste to replace the highlighted text with the text that I copied. And now I want to apply some formatting to this text. So I'm going to click and drag to make sure it's all highlighted. And I don't want to use Avenir Black again. I'm going to select the Medium option. And some typefaces have a lot of different weights connected to it. And weight is just a fancy way of saying bold or thin or kind of regular normal. Not all typefaces have these options, but Avenir has a pretty good collection of different style options. And I'm just going to select Medium. And if your text was highlighted down here in your text container, then you should see that change immediately. Another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the size. I really enjoy the contrast of having sort of the title of the slide really big and bold, but I also want to make sure that the type underneath is easy to read as well. So with my type selected, I'm going to go up here and make that change from the top area of the window. And I'm not sure how big I want it to be. So I'm going to click once in the field where it says it's currently 18 points. And then I can use my up arrow key to change the size. And I really like this technique because I can go up in one point increments if I want. And I can just stop when I'm happy with the size. Now I'm going to select my Move tool again and play around with where that's going to be positioned. And I don't like the way these last words along the right-hand edge extend beyond my title. So I'm just going to double-click on my layer palette on the T for that particular text layer so that I can access these handles to change the size of the container. And again, I like to keep things a little tidy. So if my container is way too big, I can make it smaller. Or perhaps you started off and it was too small, you can always make it larger. And now I'm going to save again. So I'm going to go to File, Save, because I've already given it a name and a location. But at the beginning, we were going to use this as an opportunity to not only learn about artboards, but also a little more about how to manipulate type in Photoshop. Now, we've already taken a look at creating a container for your type instead of just creating one big long line of type. And now I want to show you 
One other formatting option, which I use all the time in my design, because it can really make a big difference on how something looks. So I want to reselect my little block of copy here, which contains the definition for what cyan, magenta, yellow, and black are. And I'm going to do that again by double clicking the T connected with that type container. All my type is highlighted. And this time we're going to use a different area of Photoshop to control some of the changes we're going to make. Depending upon what I have selected, this properties palette here will give me information about things. So currently I have some text selected. It's showing me the type face, which is Avenir. It's showing me the weight, the size, and the color. So in a sense, this is kind of a one-stop shop for everything that you want to manipulate when it comes to type, instead of having to always go to the very top of the screen to make some changes. And it also contains other options as well. So I'm going to click and drag the properties palette out as well, so that it's easy to see how the changes I make here are affecting the type that I have selected in my document. So we already covered the typeface, the weight, and the size. Now let's talk about this area right here. And if I let my cursor hover over that icon, the little tool tip that pops up says set the letting. And letting, and letting is the term we use to describe the amount of space between lines of type. So right now it's set to auto. And an auto value means that even if we increase our type size, the amount of space between those lines of type changes in proportion with it. But many times what I want to do is sometimes I want to tighten up the letting or make it looser to add more space in between lines of type. And to do that, I'm starting off with auto. I'm going to click once where it says auto, and then I'm going to use my up arrow key. And you can see how, with every click, it's increasing the amount of space between those lines of type. And if I use my down arrow key, it will start to decrease or tighten up the amount of space between those lines of type. I'm going to increase my letting because sometimes I like to have a little extra space just to give everything a little more room to breathe. I'm going to click over and select my Move tool and see how that looks. So I decided to make a small change to the way I had my design originally laid out where everything was in the center because I remembered that I'm going to be replacing this large type with longer words as we create additional artboard slash slides for this project. So I've decided to shift it all over a little bit so it's a little off center, but still quite balanced. And just to make sure that I've got enough space for those longer words to sit, I'm going to double click on my T and make it smaller. And because I've made a change to the size of my type, it also changes the way these elements look in relation to one another. So I don't like this huge amount of space between my heading and my definition. So I'm just going to click and drag with my move tool and pull that a little closer in. And then I'm going to save that change by going to File, Save. And now we're going to take a look at artboards. So artboards are a great thing to use when you're creating a series of something where each item in the series, it could be slides, it could be a prototype for a website, shares common elements. So in this case, we're not using any graphics, but we are creating a graphic just using type. And for this series of slides we're creating today, we want them to look very similar to one another. And artboards will allow us to do that really quickly and efficiently. So I'm going to twirl up my CMYK artboard, and I'm going to duplicate it. And to duplicate an artboard, it's really no more complicated than duplicating a layer. I'm going to make sure that I have the artboard itself selected, not a layer that's in the artboard. And I'm going to click and drag it on top of the new button at the bottom of the layer palette. And now I have an exact copy of my first artboard. I'm going to rename the artboard to cyan and I'm going to twirl it open. I'm going to make one simple change. We're going to keep the definition of cyan, magenta, yellow, and black in place for each slide to keep things simple. And we're just going to change the heading text. So I'm going to double click on the T connected with that text element. The text is highlighted, and I'm going to type out the word cyan. I'm going to twirl it closed. I'm going to duplicate it. 
double click on the name, change it to yellow, twirl it open, and double click the T connected with this text container so it's highlighted, and call it yellow. Now, I've typed out the word yellow, but I'm not seeing all the letters I just typed, and that's because my text container is a little too small to show all of that type. So all I need to do is click on one of the handles and drag it over to give the type more room. I'm going to go to File, Save. We're going to Toro Closed Yellow, duplicate it, change the name, we'll call this Magenta. Twirling open the magenta layer, I double click on the T connected with the type element that I want to edit. Magenta. And we only have one left to go, so I'm duplicating magenta. I'm renaming it black. Twirling open the black artboard. Double clicking on the T connected with the type element that I want to edit. Black. Super fast, super simple, and now everything looks very unified because the typefaces don't change, the positioning of the elements don't change, and it looks like a really nice, clean, clear series of slides. I'm going to save one more time. Now, one thing I did on purpose creating this little tutorial is you'll notice that CMYK, it's always cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. And in graphic design everywhere, we always list those colors in that order. And notice that we went from cyan to yellow to magenta. So now's an opportunity for you to see how to reposition and move around artboards, which is sometimes helpful just to keep yourself organized. Uh, you want things in a certain order visually as you're working on them. So I'm going to make sure that my move tool is the active tool. And then I'm going to click on the name of the artboard as it exists in this document. And when I do that, I can click and drag and change its location in this larger Photoshop area. And then I'm going to click yellow and move it to its position next to black, and then magenta back to where it belongs, and now everything's in the right order. The last thing I want to do is I want to save out each of these artboards as an individual file, and Photoshop makes that really easy as well. And in fact, I can save out this multi-artboard document as a multiple page PDF, but today we'll save these out as a series of JPEG files. So I'm going to go to the File menu, and I'm going to go to Export, and select Artboards to files. And this dialog box is going to open up and we're going to make sure that we save all these separate files that will be created into the right location. So first I'm going to click the browse button. I'm going to make sure that it's going to get saved into the artboards and text in Photoshop tutorial folder. And again if you can't find that folder or it doesn't automatically want to save into that folder for you, remember that you can always go to desktop find the folder that you want to use, and click Open. All right, this decision here, the file name prefix. Now remember that we named all our individual artboards. And so this is the type that will show up before those separate artboard names. So I'm going to just keep all of that in place. I want artboard content only. And I'm going to leave it at the default of include background and export. We're going to select JPEG and click Run. And what this is, is it's actually a little script. And depending upon how complicated your artboards are or how well your computer is working that day, sometimes you see what it's doing as it's creating a separate file from each of these artboards. So I'm going to click Run. All right, and it says Artboards to Files was successful. I'm going to click OK. Save my file one last time, and I'm going to hide Photoshop and take a look inside my folder. And I'm just going to click and drag this over so I can see the full name. 
So remember that it said it was going to include this te text, Buchanan M. Artboards. And then it appended the name, added the name, of the layer to that longer name. So now I have each of my artboards as a separate file. And that's it.